How do you predict if something will go viral? I was trying to prove a formula. There seems to be a pattern. The more value you give away, the more viral it goes. I figured if most people put weeks into their YouTube videos, I'd 100x that. So for a few years, I put all my focus into one YouTube video. When I published it, it didn't go viral instantly. But that's exactly what happened with the other projects at first. Until one day, it gets shared by an influencer. That single moment can take months to develop, sometimes years. Then on February 27th, 2019, I got some news about the video. No, not a big share from an influencer. A copyright strike from someone who contracted me to do work with Adobe and Glock for years. So this is how you crush your enemies on YouTube. Go to their videos and file copyright strikes on all of them. It should only take a few minutes. Of course, you have to check a box promising that you're not subjecting yourself to perjury. But assuming they don't have money to sue you, you'll be just fine. I didn't pass the bar, but I know a little bit. One huge benefit of being contracted is that you can use the work in your portfolio. This is basic copyright law. I don't need to give a class on it. I told YouTube I could provide proof it was my work, but they never responded. The problem is that YouTube has little incentive to care. They're too big to care, so the little guys get forced to settle things in court, which could end up taking years and costing as much as a house. The video is called Finding Your Dream Clients. It was my blueprint on how to work with your dream companies. Only problem was I wasn't currently working with any of my dream companies, so it was going to be a journey with the risk of failure. Four months after I published the video, I came across an interesting opportunity. This was one of the sexiest tech startups I've never heard of. It was part data protection, part social media, and part suicide prevention, which fired all cylinders for me. I had a feeling this was the dream client I'd been looking for. A few days after I showed the owner the video, he showed it to his angel investor. Next thing I knew, I had a salary for more money than I thought I'd make as a kid, plus a decent chunk of equity. Despite how badly the YouTube video failed, that didn't stop me from finding my dream client. For the next few months, I would help them take their product to market. We were having conversations with large government agencies about contracts, but there were a few problems surfacing. We'd become such good friends that I let my contract slip by and didn't make it a big deal. This project tapped into something very emotional for me, and it blinded me. I knew the money was there, I'd seen it, but things weren't being managed very professionally. The CEO was a bit of an eccentric, head in the clouds, the type of guy with such a reality distortion filled that he just might be capable of pulling this off. Another issue was that he was in late stages of leukemia. There were nights of hacking away on this project that I wasn't sure he was going to wake up the next morning. I was putting everything I had into this project for months. I helped fund a spa on the floor at a government conference out of my own pocket. And that's around the time things fell apart. Next week in a board meeting, while the CEO stepped out, the investor asked me why the website wasn't up yet. I thought he knew we hadn't been paid up yet. He thought we were all paid up. He pointed out something like $100,000 was unaccounted for. So the investor pulled his funding, the CEO went into a downward spiral, it got to the point where I told him I'd only discuss business sober, which never happened. He assaulted his girlfriend later that night, went to prison. And that was around the time we realized the leukemia was a lie. As a result, I lost most of my team members that I'd been cultivating for years. They blamed me, and maybe they should have. I led them into it. That was 2019 for me. Thankfully, there was one thing tangible that I walked away with, and her name is Skylar. Back when I was working for this company, I swung by the office to do some laundry on my day off. There was this beautiful girl there. I didn't know who she was or why she acted so confident, but I had to find a way to talk to her. All of a sudden I realized she's wearing a hoodie with the WordPress logo on it. Am I seeing this right? WordPress? She says, huh? Yeah, I work for them. And the rest was history. I wasn't looking for a girlfriend, but it seemed to be a positive change in my life. Since high school, I've been a workaholic. Now for the first time in a decade, I slowed down and took a deep breath. I took ownership over how things worked out in 2019. 
I felt horrible about it, as I thought I should. I tried to embody this shitty feeling. I needed to learn a very valuable lesson from this, but after a while, the ownership turned to self-pity. Skylar helped me realize that it was time to move on. The obstacle is the way. I live by this. But I was in a dark period. Nothing was working out for me. I was swimming upstream, applying for jobs, something I hadn't considered in years. I had so many opportunities that came within inches and always fell apart in the final moments. This happened over and over again, until one day I realized the simulator was messing with me. You can call it God or whatever you want. I thought 2019 was bad, now a pandemic, then earthquakes, riots, mother nature trying to kill us on our sailing trip. If we live in a simulation, I'm pretty sure 2020 was just lazy writing, totally unbelievable. Truman totally would have caught on. You can only bang your head against a wall so many times until you realize you're going to have to find another way. That's when I came across a book recommendation from Tim Ferriss, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. This was on the last day of March 2020. The harsh reality was starting to settle in. The world was never going to be the same. While most people are upgrading their gaming setups, ramping up news consumption, what was I going to walk away with? I wanted something tangible. The artist way started me down a path of a 12 week writing course that opened up my mind to a calling from the universe. A month into journaling, I finally realized what I was going to build. I took advice from the war of art, took myself as a professional and sat down every single day to work on Project Bonsai. I helped run a SaaS company in China that made a million in monthly recurring revenue. So I have a good idea of what it takes to run one. Most of the time I felt like the 20 person dev team was way too big. Considering I'd lost the respect of my team, it made an easy decision to go about this one alone. This time I could take full ownership, no more variables. I knew alcohol was going to be a major factor. I have the awareness to know that it stands in the way of who I truly want to be. But it's not so easy to just quit drinking, especially when you've been doing it heavily for the past 10 years. So I worked away on Project Bonsai, day by day. Combine that with Skylar and I both drinking almost daily, our relationship wasn't being nurtured. We drank and argue often. I'd turn it off and go back to work on Project Bonsai. Both of our leases were coming to an end, and we wanted to find a new place outside of downtown SLC. Downtown is expensive, and with Rona and all, there was little reason to be downtown. There was one last place downtown that caught our eye. As soon as I saw the sauna and the Zen garden, I knew this had to be the birthplace of Project Bonsai. But the day after we moved in, Skylar and I broke up. She went to stay and potentially live in Denver. For a week or two, we both went our separate ways, but something didn't feel right about it. There was too much serendipity, too much synchronicity, so we made an agreement. The agreement was that we give it one last shot. I wanted to make some big changes in my life and I wanted her to do it right here with me. She suggested the 75 hard challenge. I said, why don't we make it 100 and name it something else? So we came up with the do it to 100 day challenge. Complete eight of 10 of these per day. Meditation, strategy, teach and inspire, fitness, sobriety, hydration, education, progress, breathing, and exposure. If I hoped to create a great SaaS company, I was gonna need a perfect state of zen, headlessness. The amount of times I've seen ego get to the founder's head and undermine their creation is a landfill. It takes a rare person to not let power destroy them. When Skylar and I found out we were having a baby, I was pretty terrified. When I'm creating my first product, it's something that takes a lot of time and patience to cultivate. Hell, I went into debt creating this product first time I've ever gone into debt. I didn't go to college because I didn't want to go into debt, so I take it pretty seriously. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that most of the people that I look up to have kids. It doesn't seem to limit their ability. In fact, it just might do the opposite. I went into our relationship not knowing that it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. So I will greet our baby girl into this world the same way. Okay, you might be wondering by now, what exactly is Project Bonsai? When I first started, 
I didn't know what it was going to be. I talked to Chris Doe and asked if he was interested in me making a marketing tool for him. He said yes. Okay, who's this Chris Doe I keep talking about? Why do I keep talking about him? Well, I just shut up about him already. No, I will not because he's the master sensei of education. He's from the future. There's nobody on earth I would trust more than Christo with the future of education. His dream is to teach one billion people how to make a living doing what they love, and he's already well on his way. I'd like to congratulate him and the team for reaching one million subscribers last week. This isn't a paid ad. In fact, I pay him just to be his friend. He's helped me find my ikigai which is to create products that will aid his cause. But there's one thing about this goal, Chris. If you're gonna get there, you're gonna need your own platform because as long as YouTube is your main platform, you'll only be renting your audience. You don't have the ultimate control. If you grow a plant indoors, it's only ever gonna grow so big. Outside is where the magic happens. Generations of seeds are planted and grown into a forest of bonsais. To answer the question, what is Project Bonsai? Project Bonsai was a tree that died. We plant anew, we plant often, and we build a forest of bonsais that stretches across the globe. This year for Christmas, I couldn't think of anything I wanted. I have it already. I could maybe give a gift that would bring me joy. What do I give someone like Chris Doe, who has it all? I can't give him a bonsai. That's like giving someone a pet. So instead, I can give a plot of land for a forest of bonsais, and I will tend to them daily for the rest of my life. I have registered for a nonprofit called the Bonsai Foundation. The Bonsai Foundation will create technology for the future of learning. Chris, I'm handing the keys to you.